Next one. Okay. So I have pedophilic thoughts. I fight against them every day. Please advise. Okay. So once again, disclaimer, Andy. All right. So like a reminder that, you know, what we're doing is commenting on general mental health information as opposed to, um, you know, offering detailed advice. So uh, we're going to just, you know, this is also like, is this TOS concerning? Okay, let, let's just, let, we won't read the whole post, but I just want to acknowledge, um, you know, that, that this is there and we're going to talk a little bit about this. Okay. So, um, so th this is where like the first thing that I want y'all to understand is like when we think about who we are, what is your mind? So the mind is a thought generating machine, right? And this is interesting because like what I would describe this person as having, maybe they have pedophilic thoughts, but let's call them intrusive thoughts, right? So I'm going to sort of generalize this a little bit. So sometimes our mind generates thoughts that like we don't like. And so if we use stop and think about that, then what happens is we feel like morally deficient for our mind generating pr particular thoughts. Whereas it, like in my personal view, and when I work with people who have intrusive thoughts that are ego dystonic, and we'll get to that, what that means in a second, which means that they're thoughts that they don't like. I don't consider that person to be morally deficient. In fact, what I, I actually consider that person to be like, like I respect them morally because they recognize that there are particular thoughts that they have a moral issue with and they try to not give in to those thoughts, which actually like earns me respect or my respect. Um, and, and cause when I think about, you know, what is respectable, it's actually like not giving into your mind, right? It's being in control, whether it's sort of like, and that's the goal that, you know, most of what I would do as an addiction psychiatrist is teaching people how to be in control of their mind instead of their mind controlling them, which then begs the question of like, what are you if you aren't your mind and all that kind of stuff. But I, I just want y'all to understand that your mind just generates thoughts, right? Like, so if I like, if you're walking down the street and you see like, you know, yesterday I was driving down the street and I saw a turtle in the road. And then I started thinking about like the turtle and, oh, I got to find a place like I got to find a body of water and like pick up the turtle and dropped it off in a stream somewhere. So like the thoughts in my mind are generated by all kinds of random stuff. I'm not responsible for thinking about a turtle because like I was just going down the straight street and I saw a turtle, right? And the turtle was stranded. So then my mind started thinking about the turtle. If a friend of mine messages me and says, hey, you should check out this clip from like, you know, this tournament that was awesome. And then if I like, then I'm thinking about the tournament and I'm thinking about the clip and I watch the clip and then my mind is thinking about that. So we're not really responsible for what our mind generates. What we're responsible for is how we act in, in response to the thoughts that we generate. And as a psychiatrist, I work with a lot of people who have negative intrusive thoughts. So sometimes they can be sexual in nature. Sometimes people will have thoughts of violence. Sometimes they'll have thoughts of like, you know, just all kinds of random stuff that they don't want to think. And what y'all need to understand is that the mind is just like a thought generating machine. So it's just going to like generate thoughts. That doesn't make you a bad person. If you are having negative intrusive thoughts, I think the right move absolutely is to go see a licensed mental health professional. This is definitely something that I would say that can be so painful and the consequences can actually be like quite severe, depending on what your thoughts are and if you lose control of those, that I definitely think it behooves you to get some assistance in sort of achieving your goals of like not, you know, propagating these thoughts or giving into them. So I think that like we have trained professionals and it's not about shame or it doesn't make you a bad person. It's just like, you know, you, know, you, you definitely want to get as much help as you can so that you don't have to feel that way. And the other thing that comes with intrusive thoughts is intense feelings of shame and guilt, right? Because we feel guilty for thinking these things. Whereas once again, our mind just generates thoughts. So I think it, it really like people deserve to, you know, work through that guilt and be free of that. And your mind can generate all kinds of thoughts. It doesn't necessarily make you a bad person. I think what makes you a bad person is how you act, 
right? We have, we have a Jedi and we have a Sith Lord inside all of us. It's just like, which side do you give into? Like, that's where the money is. That's what's important. The last thing that I will say when it comes to intrusive thoughts is that there are ways in my experience to cultivate a particular kind of thinking. So in this case, you know, and this is where things get complicated, but a lot of times the thoughts that our mind generates um, come from a particular experience or incident or something like that. A lot of times uh, thoughts relating to, you know, pedophilia and things like that. Sometimes those can be related to traumatic experiences in childhood. I've certainly seen that. And the good news is that like, as you work through those kinds of things, that the thoughts can actually lessen and even completely go away. Um, I certainly do believe, I mean, so we do this a lot in, in, in the dimension of yoga is that we cultivate a particular kind of thinking. So if you think about where do the thoughts in your mind come from, some of them come from inside your mind and some of them come from outside your mind. So if I have a bunch of friends who are playing a particular game, so like everyone has been playing Valorant recently, my mind is going to be thinking about Valorant, right? So that thought comes from the outside. So as you cultivate a particular kind of environment, you can start to sow particular seeds in your mind that will then bear fruit of a particular kind of thoughts. If I'm thinking about Valorant and playing Valorant and like hanging out with people who are talking about Valorant, my mind is going to be thinking about Valorant many hours of the day. Whereas if I'm, you know, at a cooking camp with a bunch of people who love to cook and we're all experimenting recipes, that's what I'm going to think about. And then a month from now, when my mind sort of like remembers what I've been doing, it'll either think about cooking or it'll think about Valorant, depending on what I sort of do in the interim. So just to kind of like summarize, the first thing is that generally speaking, sometimes people have something called intrusive thoughts. So intrusive thoughts are thoughts that you don't want to happen and can't stop. These, I don't think, make you a bad person. So like some people have intrusive thoughts. Sometimes intrusive thoughts are a sign of something like obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD, right? And sometimes, especially in, in people like I've had uh, patients for example, who will get diagnosed with OCD and will have very negative thoughts. And then as we treat the OCD, the negative thoughts actually decrease. And then like they can sort of be free of them. So there's actually treatment for this kind of stuff. And a lot of times, like this person is thinking like, I am a pedophile. Like the problem here is that they've diagnosed themselves. Whereas, you know, sexual thoughts that are inappropriate are not a diagnosis. They're a symptom that could come from any manner of places. It could come from traumatic experiences in childhood. It could even be a normal variant of the human population. We don't really know. It could also be related to obsessive compulsive disorder. There are a lot of different things that we don't really understand about the nature of these thoughts. And so it's really important to see a licensed professional that will help you work through these things so that you can get the appropriate treatment. Um, the, and the last thing to kind of consider is that you can cultivate your thoughts in a particular direction. So, so this is where like, I recognize that this, like, maybe we get a temporary ban. Like if we do, that's, you know, hopefully we don't get permanent ban. But, you know, if we get a temporary ban, like I wouldn't be upset about that. Like, I think it's reasonable that, you know, there are limits and TOS concerns and things like that. And this is the challenge that we face, right? Is that like, but like the problem is that these people are out there and they're actually like way more common than you think. These experiences are really common. So the challenge that I face is like, what do we do about this? Right? Because people are like having these thoughts out there and they're super ashamed of it. They feel like really bad about it. Like there's like nowhere to talk about it. And it's my experience that like sometimes you have to face difficult situations to like work through them so that you can like healthily move past it. And I don't know how we do that without acknowledging that these things exist and trying to support these people and understand these phenomena. And if we get banned for that, you know, hopefully not famous last words, like, you know, I'm not going to argue against that. I think it would be appropriate. Like I could understand the case that we get banned for having this discussion here, but at the same time, like, you know, these things happen and it's important for people to recognize that it's not that isolated of experience. Intrusive thoughts happen a lot and there are all kinds of methods that you can get help for this. It doesn't mean that you're a morally deficient person. Just go see a licensed professional. You will be amazed by what people can do for you if you reach out for help. Okay, so some people are asking, isn't a lot of it rooted in being sexually assaulted as a child? So this question is important because 
I want y'all to understand that when you have a case like this, we don't know where it's rooted. I want y'all to understand as a clinician, there is something called a differential diagnosis. So if you have intrusive thoughts, there are a number of different things which could be causing them. That's why it's important to not jump to conclusions. And that's why it's important to see a licensed mental health professional, because we could talk, I could talk to you generally about intrusive thoughts, but I would be doing a huge disservice if I said that these intrusive thoughts come from this place and only this place, because my experience as a clinician is that intrusive thoughts can have their origin in many different areas. And that's why it behooves you. You deserve to go work with an individual person who can help you find the actual origin of where these thoughts are coming from. And sometimes those can be from things like sexual assault in childhood. Okay. Can we get a behoove emote? 